Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, 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 my friend. Uh, today, hallelujah, welcome, welcome. The Lord is going to speak to us and he's going to bless you. But first, let's take time to get in the spirit. There's going to be music, a little bit of music, and we're going to pray because we need to prepare our hearts. We need to prepare. We don't go in the presence of God and begin to speak or to ask, but we invite him in. So that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we bless your name this morning. We ask you to come and touch us, your people. We welcome your Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Abba Papa. We welcome all the heavenly hosts. I pray, God, that you lift every soul that is watching towards you. And that from today forward, they will fly and they will work with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My friend, if you receive that, say in the name of Jesus, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So today we are going to talk about faith. Especially the days that we are living in, the days ahead of us are the days where the righteous shall live by faith. It might not make sense here yet, but in my country, in Rwanda, there is such a hunger. People are dying of not having food. I told you last time, there are people who are being sick, and when they take them to the hospital, they give them the porridge from the hospital, they get well, and the doctor says, well, I guess you are not sick. I guess it was the hunger. And so, as we even enter this next month, the food is very rare, there is no money, and there are more people who are very hungry. And so when I am preaching to my people until we are able to get them food, you know, I'm working on it, but until I am able to really do that, I am teaching them to live by faith. Amen. So by faith, you can live. Mm -hmm. I told you that, um, you know, there are people in our midst who have gone on a fast for 40 days, yes. living on nothing but juice. There are people in our midst who have fasted for 21 days, taking nothing but water. There are people who go three days, no water, no drink, and they are fasting, but they don't die. Why? Because the righteous shall live by faith. Your faith will take you anywhere. Your faith will help you to cross rivers and valleys. Your faith, your faith will take you places that you cannot go spiritually. I will begin by giving a testimony of how yesterday my sister and I we went skydiving. So, believe me, my faith is going to another level and I'm not going to stop. <laughs> God has made this brain very smart. That your brain is like a machine. It's like a motor for your body. And our brain can do so much. We are so smart. We are not even using maybe 3% of the wisdom God has given to us. Now, who is willing to do more, to tap into more? Hey, nothing is going to happen with our faith. So, my sister, please come here since I'm going to be sharing this testimony. 
Hallelujah. My sister and I, the Lord has spoken to us about skydiving because every year on our birthday, uh, please adjust the camera a little bit. On our birthday, the Lord gives us a special present. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So this year, the Lord has said skydiving. That's right. At first, what did we say? No. We said, no, thank you. <laughs> we love you, Daddy. We love you, Papa. But no, thank you. And then he had us watch the video of people skydiving. We even said, well, I, I'll do it when I get to heaven, right? Yeah, no, thank you. No, no thank you. <laughs> thank it's you, like it just, yes. That's not just for me. <laughs> yes, that's not just for me. However, the Lord loves us so much, and He mm -hmm. knows that we love to have a fun, isn't it? So, on our birthday, I mean, the day of her birthday, which comes three days before mine, we went to celebrate together, and the Lord said, now is the time. <laughs> yes, by this time, He had to explain to us and tell us how it's actually really fun, and there's nothing to worry, yes. because He's going to be with us. Yeah, and the Lord gives us assurance, I promise you, you're going to land. That's right. And the Lord uses your son. That's right. Who is what? He is He's a, a skydiver instructor. Yes, he is yeah. a skydiver instructor. And he was there. I tell you, when it comes to preaching about that, he's the best teacher, the best preacher you can, you can find. He convert everyone yes. here to go skydiving. Yes, <laughs> he is a persuader. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the Lord spoke to me first, and he said, you're going to obey me, right? I said, okay, we're going to do it. That's right. And then when I saw that my sister is going to do it, I said, I'll go with you. Yes, yes. <laughs> And so, yesterday was the day. That's right. So, we're going to explain it to you what they do. Okay. So, first, they fly you high. Can you tell us that part? So, they usually fly you high up to 12,000 feet up in the air, but they took us higher. Yeah, because <laughs> your son Yeah, so works my son there. works there, but also he needed to come in the air and meet me so we can hold hands and take a picture. So mm -hmm. they, they needed more time for free fall. Uh, so we got to 14,000 feet up in the air. And let me tell you, the whole time I had no fear. So I'm going to teach you something. So you are sitting down in a plane mm -hmm. and it's going up and it's going up. And when you get to that point of 14,000 in the air where we were yesterday, the door opens. Oh, now no. I was in the front. I was the one to go first. So when they start jumping, there is no stop. You just go. <laughs> but let me tell you, I, I want to share something with Please. you. Please. So it's very good to set your mind up to something you want to do if there is a hint of fear because that's really scary i mean can you imagine falling from the sky so the whole week i told myself no the lord has not given me a spirit of fear <laughs> <laughs> but power and love and of a sound mind so i'm gonna have a sound mind so i start declaring that i will have lots of fun and i will just smile and that's the whole week my mind, I was preparing myself. I said, I'm going to have fun. I'm not going to think about it because the Lord is going to be there with me. Mm -hmm. So when we went yesterday, I, didn't, I was not even thinking about it. I was in the front. And when he said, okay, push your feet out of the plane. And he pushed me out. And I was gone. <laughs> and then the photographer is out there saying, smile, smile, smile. And I was, I I was having a time of my life. I mean, it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. So for me, my part was once I say yes to the Lord, I refuse myself to think about the next minute. I live the one moment in a time. So I am in a place where there is no fear. So I'm not going to think about the next minute. I live one moment in a time. That's right. I live the present to the second. <laughs> and so when the door opened, of course, my sister go first. And there was another a few people left. 
I decided I'm not going to look down. <laughs> I decided that I am going to trust Jesus. Amen. And I trusted him 100%. When, when we were underway, a friend of mine called me. You know, I haven't spoken to him in a long, long time. But he called me. He said, can I talk to you? I said, well, can we talk after I'm going skydiving? Be praying. He said, well, are you sure? Do you have a life insurance? <laughs> he said, do you have a good life insurance? Do you have a good life insurance? <laughs> I said, oh, wait a minute. Well, you say your life insurance is Jesus. Jesus. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I decided I am going to close the door to fear. So my teaching today, I'm going to tell you it's all about here. That's true. It's why you believe. Mm -hmm. If you believe you can do it, you're not going to do so it. True. And I'm going to teach you today, there is a saying, Birds of a feather fly, they fly together. together. Mm. If you want to have, to have a faith, do not hang out with Thomas. No, no. Yeah, you, you, you're gonna hang out with uh, you're gonna hang out with Peter. That's right. And you're gonna hang out with Jesus. That's right. You're not going to hang out with Thomas because Thomas will bring you down. down. It will bring fear. Yes, thank Amen. you, my sister. Thank you. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So we did it. From 14,000 high up in the air, you go, you hang on in nothing but God and what he says. And then you try to remember to do what they told you. You know, in the beginning they say, you know, no, no, hold yourself look like up. this. And then look up. And look up like somebody who is flying. And then, and then smile. smile, look at the horizon, and then do this, and then have fun. It looks like the way my sister fell out of the plane was different than mine. <laughs> the first two minutes, I did not know what was going on. <laughs> because my instructor, he decided to go fancy in the beginning. And instead of you going, he, he flipped. And he didn't flip one. He did it like two, three times. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so I began to say, you know, uh, uh, that there is a song that Jeremiah used to uh, sing about uh, the angels, you know, flying and you know, just spinning and spinning. That song began to come to me. But the first two minutes, my mind was kind of blank. I feel the wind, but I trust what God said. I will bring you home safe. I bet on it. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. So to have a faith, you are not going to see what Thomas sees. Right. You are not going to look to the left, to the right. You are going to hang on to what God says. Amen. That's it. That's, That's it. the way we're going to do it. Amen. You heard that in nothing but what God said. We have had a visitation where the Lord took us to hear. Amen. Do you remember what he says? You have to trust me right. that I will bring you back to your family safe. Amen. But what happens in the middle, Amen. it's another story. And so you think about what he said, and you know that you're going to be all right. So don't worry about the middle. The middle, you might see the devil, you might see here, you might see demons, but who cares? I am with the big, big guy. Hallelujah. So today, I'm going to talk to us about the faith of John the Baptist. Hallelujah. You know, John the Baptist and Jesus, they were six months apart. John was older than Jesus six months. Six months older than Jesus. And when John was born, there was instruction given by God how they are going to raise him up. 
he was to be filled with the Holy Spirit in the mother's womb. He was to be taken and live in the wilderness, being fed locust and honey, being on a diet. There is a teaching I'm going to bring. What you eat affects you spiritually. Did you know that? Okay, some people are looking at me like, oh, don't bring the new age teaching. Do you remember I told you how the other day I decided to pray all night long and everything was going well until I have that cake. <laughs> I, it was her birthday and I had that tiramisu cake. And after I have all that sugar in me, guess what? Oh, we want to lay down. We want to lay down. I asked my husband, what was that? My husband said, that was a sugar crush. <laughs> so there are things that you do and spiritually they're going to affect you. So he had to be on a diet for a reason. That's, right. That's why even in summertime we fast because denying yourself will make you spiritually strong. So preparing for Rosh Hashanah, we're going to start doing some heavy duty fasting. <laughs> Who is with me? Fasting. Clarice is like, I am with you, Pastor. Woohoo! Hallelujah. We're going to fast. Okay, please register everybody who's going to be on my team. Yes. We, 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 we're going to do it. Sister, we, we are in this together. We can do all things through Christ. Who strengthened me? If I can snorkel, if I can uh, fly and jump out of the airplane like a commando, I can do all things. Hallelujah. I am a soldier for Jesus. I can do all things. Amen. Amen. So, John the Baptist lives out there in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, God began to teach him about the Messiah. And that time in Israel, everybody was waiting for the Messiah. They knew there is going to be the Messiah. It is so sad that when he came, they missed him. In verse 7, the Bible tells us that John the Baptist came as a witness to testify about the light. He came to testify about Jesus so that all might believe. Amen. Now, you want to have a great faith? It starts right here. It starts with your believing. Amen. So, God send always witnesses to us. Woe is you, if you do not believe the man or a woman of God, God is sent in your life. When they are sent by God, you must believe. Amen. So he came as a witness to testify about the right so that all might believe through him. Not everybody can hear God. Not everybody can Believe God when they hear his voice sometime. If he were to stand in the sky speak, there are many people who will not believe. So that's why God goes through your pastor or the people, the evangelists, and he speaks through them, and they bring the message to us. So at that time, because people could not hear God, he came through John the Baptist. Woe are those people who are not going to believe John the Baptist. And we see it later that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they did not believe in the baptism of John. They did not get baptized. They did not believe in him. Because they did not believe in him, even when God showed up, they did not believe in him. So faith begins at first 
by you believing the word of God. It begins by you welcoming and believing the messenger of God, the one through whom God speaks to you. Now think about it. Are you believing the Lord's messengers? Are you believing? I'm not saying you can't hear God, your vo the voice of God yourself. No, you can. But even when God comes to you, do you believe? Because that's what you must do. And my advice to you, believe right away. Do not be like Thomas. Do not wait for the signs. Do not wait to see this and that. When you pray, when you seek God, he will give you discernment so that when he speak, you will know it's him. When you know it's him, just believe. Believe. Don't look to the left, to the right, like skydiving. Just look at the horizon. Live one moment at a time. Do not go in the doubt and do not let the voice of the evil one speak to you. Amen. Amen. So in verse 11, uh, in verse 7, we have learned that we must believe. For example, when my nephew came to me and spoke by God to me, I had to believe him. When I was skydiving yesterday, I had to believe the instructor. That's right. When he tells me, okay, now we're going to get the parachute. I need you to do this. I do that. I do not question. If I question, there can be a problem. Amen? Amen. Have you seen a little girl or a little boy who questioned the mother or the father? Have you seen them saying, where, where are you getting that from? I don't believe that's true. They believe. They believe. So we need to have that kind of faith. Even yesterday, I saw how the team, they were working together, the pilot, the trainer, the instructor, the videographer. There is a, a very special uh, videographer that they had over there who skydive also. And so she comes in the air and she takes your video. She takes the pictures. And she has to do everything in a time because once you go down in your uh, parachute, you don't meet again. No, they have to do it when you are free falling. Yes, yes. free falling. Mm -hmm. So it's a problem if you do not believe Jesus. It's a problem if you do not believe the instructor. It's a problem if you do not believe the Holy Spirit. But God is still a God of second chance. Even he gave a chance to Thomas. But he told him, Blessed are those who have not seen, yet they have believed. Amen? Amen? So in verse 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Everybody is now a child of God. A child of God is the one who believes in him. He is the one who received him, who said, Jesus, I receive you. I receive you, Jesus. And my friend, right there, he's talking to you. He's telling you, receive me, receive me. When you receive him, you become automatically the child of God. That when we say someone is born again, you are born again when you believe in him and you receive him. Right there in your living room, right there in your uh, bedroom, you can say, Jesus, I believe in you. I receive you. I believe that you are the Messiah. I believe that you are the only one who came, died on the cross to save me. 
When you do that kind of prayer, even though it is simple, it's life-changing, and that makes you the child of God. The child of God is not the one who is born of blood and the flesh, but is the one who accepts, who believes. Faith is a force. Can you imagine that faith can take a person like me? Before I am saved, I am a child of the devil. I am going to hell. But because I believe, all of a sudden, it changes a sinner like me and it makes me a saint. Thank you, Lord. That's how powerful faith is. When the sky dive, it's by faith. When they fly the plane, yeah, there is the technology, but it's also by faith. So you must receive with action by saying, yes, I receive you. And then when you receive him, when you accept the invitation, you step into the airplane and you, you free fall and you trust that he's going to catch you. You trust him. Mm. Now, Johnny the Baptist comes and he began to tell people about Jesus. In verse 33, John makes it very plain, very clear. He says, I did not recognize him. But he who sent me to baptize in the water said to me, He upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him this is the one who baptizes in the holy spirit so even when john came he grew in the wilderness and god began to teach him about the messiah and when the time came hallelujah like the time came for us to be pushed out of the airplane the Holy Spirit got him out of the wilderness and he told him you need to stop proclaiming. You're going to tell them about the one who is coming. You're going to tell them who he is, even though you do not know him, even though you did not see him. Can you imagine these days, if God came to us and may be asked, some people will not believe it. They will say, wait, what if this is a fake and I end up being seen as crazy? We are too concerned about our reputation. We want to save our reputation. Well, what, if, what if this happened? Then I'll be embarrassed. So he goes out. He starts telling them about this Messiah. He has nothing. He does not know. But he knew only what God taught him. Thank you. Which he says, He who sent me to baptize, in verse 32, in verse 31, actually, I did not recognize him. But so that he might be manifested to Israel, I came baptizing in the water. The Lord sent him by faith. And he tells him, John the Baptist, my beloved, I love you so much. You're going to go. You're going to go and you're going to tell people to prepare a way for me. By this time, you will now know who is the Messiah. But one day, you're going to see this man who looks maybe like this coming. And when you baptize him, you are going to see a dove coming and resting upon him. That will be the sign for you to know he's the one. So even if Johnny the Baptist came by faith. Amen? Amen. Every level of serving God 
it by faith. How do you think we will be raptured? It's by faith. We believe in the rapture. It sounds like crazy for many people, you know. All of a sudden, there are two in the bed. One will be taken and one will be left. Oh, by the way, there are people who have been perverting that message, saying, well, it's the homosexual. Two men will be in a, a one place. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, let's say that. Two will be in one bed. Two men will be in one bed. So they say, well, you see that? No, that cannot be because the Bible already forbid homosexuality. The Bible does not condemn sin, and on the other hand, the Bible accepts sin. So, when they say two men, it's two people. That's right. It's two people. It could be two men in one room. It could be a woman and a man. It could be, you know, any gender. It could be two women in one room. And one will be taken, taken by faith because they believe in the blessed hope. If you don't believe in the rapture, that's fine. You're not going anywhere. That's okay. That's all right. You're going to stay in the tribulation and you're going to go through everything. And please don't say, I say, I am a pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib. I'm none of that. I don't know when he is coming. All I know is that he told me there's going to be a rapture. That's right. Amen? Faith. Hallelujah. So you've got to have a faith. So God tells him, when you baptize him, this is what will happen. And then in Matthew 16, God will not deceive you. When he says, I will do it, he will do it. Amen. The Holy Spirit says, say it again. God will never deceive you. Amen. If God says, I will give you peppers, he will give you peppers. If he says, I will give you a wife, he's going to give you a wife. Oh. If God says, I will give you a husband, he's going to give you a husband. You stand on that. Amen. Don't look at your age. Well. Don't look at so and so getting married ahead of you. Well. Amen? Amen. You hold and what God has to say, Amen. and then you stay faithful. God. Did you know that everything God says, He promises, He does? Amen. The problem is He never tells you when. Mm. And in our mind, we make the when. when? Oh. It's going to happen when I'm 30. Okay. okay, 30 hits, I'm still single. <laughs> oh, now I know. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus died when he was 33. <laughs> okay. You, you even go buy a dress. I tell you what, you can buy a That's dress by faith. Said, right? yeah. Oh, yeah, I did that. I did that. I did everything by faith. 33, when he hits, on your birthday, if you set that in your mind and you don't see him coming, you get depressed. So, my advice to us, when God says he's going to do it, throw away your clock, don't put a date or a time on it. That's right. It's going to happen. God knows when. So, in Matthew chapter 3, 16, he says, after being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. I tell you, I was not there, but I think John the Baptist began to dance and to shout and to rejoice because, you know, he's a, a human being like us. Even an Elijah is a human being like us. So there are times where they could wonder, oh my goodness, it's been a long time. When is this guy coming? And when he saw his signs, he rejoiced. Hallelujah. Verse 17, it says, 
And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That was his confirmation. Thank you, God. I'm not a false preacher. Thank you, God. I'm not a false prophet. Many times they call us a false prophet, but usually who you call a false prophet is probably not a false prophet. It's that we interpret the prophecy wrong. So when a prophecy comes, it's a spiritual, you need a spiritual understanding to know what the prophecy means. So John had come baptizing by faith. He did not know even how he's going to do it, how long. But he began to baptize this day, so and so come, and the, the Pharisees start coming, and when he saw them, he said, you brother for vipers, who want you to free from the wrath to come? He could discern them. He could see the snakes in them. And they did not get baptized. Even when they ask, what about us? They did not believe him. Because later, in the book of John and many other gospels, we see that the reason why they rejected Jesus is because they rejected the messenger. They rejected the witness. They did not believe the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We always need to know the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We need always to recognize when God visits us and not reject that voice. Of any time, he's going to come to you as a homeless, as a poor person, as somebody who is dumb. So you need to be very careful in your mind how you treat people. All people are equal before God. So the ones that we tend to push away, I have found out those are the ones who hold my blessing. I have experienced it many times in the church where the ones who came having no place to stay and I welcome them, those were the rich people in disguise. I have seen that those who were poor spiritually, when I welcome them again in my house, they all open their eyes. The next day they see Jesus. Amen. So we need to believe and we need to receive. So closing this message, I would say, when it comes to faith, it's all in your mind. When it's time to eat, they bring that, when I go visit my sister here, she cooks really good. They have those uh, brochettes. How do you call them in English? Kebabs. Kebabs. You hold it, and your brain and your senses, they start smelling it before you know you have opened your mouth. You don't even think about it. It's all here in your mind. Have this mind protected. Protect this place, this mind, the thoughts. Protect them from the negativity. Oh, it cannot be done. It will never be done. Protect them from those people who do not believe in the word of God. Oh, that can be Jesus. That can be God. Yes, it can be. God healing people, raising the dead. I was sharing the other day with a friend about, you know, Mama Domitra who, who died after four days. God raised her back to life, and today she's a preacher. And uh, this friend said, no, that can happen. Well, nothing shall be impossible with God. All things are possible. So what God is telling us, open your mind to believe. Believe everything that is 
Bible. Believe every word of God. Believe everything that is heavenly. <coughs> believe, 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 and only believe. And how do you believe? You just believe. I'm not going to question it. If you start bringing a fear, I'm not looking at you. I'm not talking to you again. Have you ever wondered why when Jesus was going to raise the little girl, when he got to the house, he told the disciple, now all of you, you stay over there. I am only taking three. Peter, James, and John. Why? Because those were the right people to hang out with. Even if you have a faith, but you hang out with people without faith, they'll bring you down. Even if you have a faith, but you hang out with people who are negative, they will bring you down. So you need to protect your faith. You need to protect your thoughts from negativity, from the people of bad influence. You need to hang out with John the Baptist at the moment, because we know there was a time where he started doubting, and the doubt will come. That warfare, you fight it. Amen? All things are possible with God. Nothing shall be impossible with our Heavenly Father. Do you guys believe today? Do you believe? I don't know what you're going through. But do you believe that God can do it? Or rather, let me ask you, is it the will of God? Is it about you? Or is it something that's going to benefit the body of Christ? Is it something that's going to benefit more people? Is it something that's going to benefit uh, the entire community? Is it something that's going to benefit the church? Is it something... Because... God will never give you a blessing to be a blessing just to you. We are a vessel that Thank flows. You. We are a vessel that, that are supposed Thank to be connected. giving out, giving out, giving out. So if it's for his kingdom, if it's to glorify his name, my friend, I will just say, Yes, yes, yes. Why not? God has given you a dream. And I can see there are some of you who are about to give them up because it's too hard. Everything that God will do, it's going to be too hard for us. That's why he's God. That's why you are not God, rather. If you can do it yourself, then you don't need God. There are things that we can do with uh, really, you know, waiting on God. There are things that we know how to do. We have a dominion, 100%. But there are those other things where we need heaven intervention. When you have those projects, when you have those dreams, do not put a cap on it. Do not put a limit. Is it a million? Is it a billion of soul of money? Nothing shall be impossible with God. Is it about salvation? Is it about your marriage? Is it about your work, your school? Stand up. We're going to pray. Nothing is impossible. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, Father, we come to you and we bring our heart. Bring your heart out. Just bring your heart. Because today, 
God is going to do a war on your behalf. He is going to get rid of unbelief. And from today forward, you are going to live by faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we give you permission to shred every unbelief from all of us. We give you our mind, we give you our hearts, we give you all of it, and we give you our consent. Yesterday, before I fly high, before I jump out of the airplane, they had me write a form of consent. I consent. So, give God the permission to take away your unbelief and never take it again. I can hear the Lord telling me the message that you're preaching is the right hand. It's a message I have for my children. Because the coming days, my friend, there are the days where you will no longer depend upon your money. Did you know that as of this coming month, your $20 is going to be worth $5? Did you guys know that? So, our hope now cannot be in money. It cannot be in our saving account. It has to be in God. In God we trust. Father, we receive that in the time of faith. We receive the supernatural faith. And we ask you that you help us. Help the one who receives it, Lord, to not give it away to guard it and to protect it in the name of Jesus and you say amen. amen all right my friend we're gonna stop here today but this message will continue next week until we meet again remember to smile and to be happy, happy.